I think everybody knows that we have also enhanced our, uh, you know, we have expanded our leadership roles towards our students and we have given them different profiles this, this year. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we welcome Mr. Prakash Chugani, who will be the uh, facilitator of this program. Mr. Chugani, I request you to introduce yourself. Rather, I introduce you to the students. Welcome to GMS. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Gaur. Thanks for that uh, hearty welcome. And it's an absolute pleasure to be here in front of the young leaders. And I'd like to start with a simple note. I mean, we talk about this whole program as awaken the leader within. So it goes without saying that each and every one of us are leaders. The question is, when is it that we're going to awaken them? Some awaken them early in their lives, some late, some perhaps never do. Because they simply believe or they have a wrong belief that leaders are either made, which is they're either born or they can actually go ahead and learn leadership skills and qualities and become great leaders. And that debate has been going on, you know, from time immemorial, but it has been researched and proved that every single leadership trait can actually be developed. And I'm a corporate trainer. I go into companies. I go into places where we help people in companies. And they are people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s who are learning leadership skills and how to become better leaders. So it's very nice to understand that if leadership skills could be developed, if you can learn those leadership qualities and those competencies, then why don't we do it early in life? And that's exactly why we thought it's a beautiful idea to support you in a small way to see if there's some idea that you can pick up from today, right? And so that should be your idea from the end of, we have an R today and we have an R after a few days. What is the one thing you might take back which is going to support you in developing your leadership capacity or capability? You already may be doing wonderful things as a leader. Who knows? One more thing might make you an amazing leader. And so that's why we are here today. Let me share a story of my own life. Till standard 12, I used to watch people, my classmates uh, and other colleagues who would go up and debate and, you know, they would go for elocution competitions and I would look at them and admire them. And I had something in me would say that I can do it too, but I never ever moved forward and tried it out. I went to college and that's when I said, no, enough is enough. I better get myself out of it. So I started taking the initiative. I went and joined the road track club. I would go for every local competition that was there in college. I remember the first debate competition I went up to, I had the script right that, written down completely. I had my eyes into that script. Not for one second did I look up that script. I just vomited every single word in that script. And then I was like, whew. Wow, my first step now, I've taken off that fear. And from now on, I'm going to continue doing in that journey. That same year, I actually won the inter-college inter, inter competition in debate. The next year, I went to Delhi representing the entire university. It was an inter, all India inter-university competition. And then from there onwards, I've taken this thing to a very new level where speaking in public, sharing ideas and helping educate people has become a it's become second nature to me. So that part of my leadership would have never gone up if I had not taken the initiative. So sometimes we just believe that leadership is all about being the number one position in an organization, being the number one position in a team of people. That's not necessarily the only way. Titles don't make people leaders. There are a lot of qualities that each of us have and just expressing those qualities make us leaders. So you could take some initiatives. You can support others take initiatives. You could encourage other people. You could be this person who uh, can, you know, you do not necessarily be the person who has to make those big shifts in life to be that leader that you always might be. That's also great. And that's also leadership. And we're going to see all those aspects. But remember, each and every one of us are leaders. We all have uniquenesses. We all have specialities. Allowing that uniqueness and speciality to just emerge makes you a leader. I used to be horrible at sports and I would get jealous of those others who would actually be great with football and cricket and tennis. I remember my dad came up to me and said, Prakash, you remember you're a good skates, you know, you're good with roller skates. Why don't you go and do more of it? 
And I loved skates. I would do it. And then I remember because I would just focus now on skates and not about the things I could not do. There were championships of skates that I was skating. I would win always, hands down. So I became one of the best uh, person on roller skates in my school. Now that would have never been possible if I did not turn into seeing what am I good at and can I actually put all my energies in that area rather than seeing what am I not good at? Hey, these guys are good at this and I'm not good at that. And so I would feel horrible about myself. I wouldn't really go and do what I would actually have the potential of doing. So if you've tried to understand a little bit of what I'm trying to help you understand today is that each and every one of us are leaders. We've got to take that initiative. We've got to take that understanding of what's in it me in me that is unique, that I would like to express, that I enjoy doing. And then start focusing in that area and see how well you actually come up and uh, you know, become and emerge as these great leaders. So I put a few uh, interesting things together and I have a small activity. It's more in terms of, um, I'm just trying to help myself understand if you were to take on a leadership role in the world today, uh, how would you actually go about taking certain decisions or what would you do? So let me just ask you the small exercise to start with, all right? Here is an exercise that we just, some sort of a nice breaker for us uh, as we enter into this realm of leadership. Imagine that you are the leader of a geographical region, right? And it has people in it, it's inhabited with people. What would you have done to help people through the pandemic, right? So this is something very relevant for us and we are seeing a lot of leaders across the globe. We know that so many people are doing things right, so many are not doing things right. And so there's a lot of things happening. So just, it's easy to look at things from the other side and just keep blaming, criticizing, complaining. But if you were in the shoes of a leader, let's say you are that leader now, you are responsible for a certain region, what would you have done to help people through the pandemic? Now, I just want you to think first, stop for a while, don't do anything. I want you to just turn, on, turn inside within yourself and start thinking before you share. And I'll show you how you can share this, but just take a minute and think about what are some of the things you would do. Okay, so this is what I'd like you to do. Can you please share your top three answers in the chat box? Just the top three answers in terms of what would you do if you were a leader? Go on, type it out on the chat box and we'll get to see all these answers and let everybody else as well see what would you have done. Top two, top three is okay. What are some of the things you would do as a leader? Very good, we're getting some good answers. Remember, there's no right or wrong answer, yeah? Great, we have some beautiful leaders here. Come on, we're listening to some beautiful answers over here. 
I'm just reading a few ones. So I will recommend everyone to take the vaccine. I'll, uh, you know, enforce a lockdown, recommend everyone to, uh, where I'm just going up, stay home and do not go out until it's urgent, distribute essentials like masks, et cetera, give proper education and first aid, providing masks, oxygen cylinders, food, so all the facilities that you require to give them uh, uh, for free. Uh, remove the thought in everyone's mind that we are in a pandemic, so it's, and focus on what we are good at, for example, arts and craft, very nice. Give handouts to support economy during, very nice. So you want to support economy. Okay. Okay, and then we need supplies. Okay, great, thank you, thank you. I think, okay, let me share in a gist, the essence of what I'm actually picking up from most of you. What I'm picking up is that for some of you, you feel health is important, facilities are important. Some of you, it's about recovery. For some of you, it's prevention. For some of you, it's the vaccine. For some of you, it's about awareness, all right? So each and every one of us are able to see that we need safety of people. We are taking some actions for that. We've got to do one, two, three. And we also want to take care of the economy. We want to take care of the supplies. We want to take care of all these things. On the other hand, we want to help people understand that it's not that bad. Please focus on the good stuff. So you're also trying to convey a message to people. You want to bring more awareness. And we know that if you're doing all these things, we've got to be able to do that in a way that is effective. It has to bring results. So in other words, if you want to do all these things, there's a lot of planning that's happening. What do you want to do first? What do you want to do second? So I want to have awareness. I want to have lockdowns. I want to have uh, these uh, you know, rules. I want to enforce this. So there are a lot of things to do. We've got to see how we can have them in a certain structured fashion. So there's a certain plan that's required. One of the things about an important and essential elements of leaders is planning. And of course, it's also about timing. When do you want to do what? And that's a very important part. So you want to plan, you want to be organized, and you also also ensure you are able to manage your time excessively well. The other aspect which I saw coming through is you want people to be aware. You want to create campaigns. You want to so whatever you want to do in terms of conveying to the outside, you want to be a great communicator. And when I say great communicator, we will see that as you move forward. But essentially, we want to be communicating effectively. But also, we want to be creative because we want people to change. Remember, getting people to change their habits is one of the most difficult things to do under the sky, right? I mean, even when we are children with five years of age or 10 years of age, we pick up habits that's very difficult for us to change. You probably have a younger brother, younger sister at home. They have certain habits. Imagine how difficult it is for you to make them change that habit. It could be something they, the way they eat. It could be the way they read or study or whatever it could be. It could be some tantrums that they actually are able to pull very clear, nicely. Getting people to change is not easy. And so your communication should be creative enough to see that you get the change that you want from people. So we are essentially looking at four things that i like to show you that usually leaders need to be immensely good with, all right? Uh, and I've mentioned that to you in a short way, in a very short way, but it's, it's, it's very critical to see these four things. All right, so here we have planning, time management, communication, and creativity. So all these things that you spoke about, that is a plan that's required over there. You need to manage them according to the time. So do I need to worry about economy first or do I want to worry about safety first? Do I want to worry about my relationship with other countries and nations first? And that's also important, but, or do I worry about my own people first, right? So where is that long line that I draw? Do I want to talk about traveling and help people start moving from one place to another place or say, no, no traveling now, that's not, important for us today. So we want to push back everything to do with travel. What about entertainment? We need entertainment. Hey, yes, we do. But right now we are on a war footing and we don't need entertainment at this stage. So that's talking about how do I ensure that I have all these activities with relationship to time. And so that's what time management is at a larger scale. It's not just about ensuring that you're punctual, which is a part of time management, but doing things in the time that they need to be done is what really time management is for the leader. So let's say, when we talk about planning, so today we're gonna to look about, we're gonna talk about planning and time management. When we come back uh, in the next session, we're gonna talk about communication and creativity. So let's talk about planning and time management. The most essential aspect of planning, 
is what? It's goal setting. You need to have a goal. You need to have an aim. And to the extent that you have a goal and an aim that is clear, to that extent, you're able to achieve that goal. Because if you don't have clarity of where you're going, then you're going to go wherever you possibly are moving to and you'll feel that, well, this is where I had to be because I did not have any aim. Uh, so it's very important that we have an aim so that we know that we are in the right direction. When we look at leaders who actually have to have a goal, there are some very important aspects of a leader's goals, especially what happens is leaders have a huge impact on others. And so three things that every leader must take care of when they're actually setting their goals, their goals must be altruistic. You mean, what I mean is the I has to be taken away from those goals. I can't be self-centered in the goals that I actually set when I'm a leader. I need to think about the general good for everybody. What's good for the organization. If I was in an in a organization leader, if I was in a team, which was a sports team, I need to look at what is good for the team. What is good for the nation? That's called goals of leaders need to be altruistic. Two, they need to be most impactful. So when I, I might have 15 goals, some may have a small impact, some may have a high impact. Sometimes the ones that are impactful are more tedious or more difficult. Uh, more probably it requires me to get out of my comfort zone, but they are where the most impact is. So if I truly want to be that leader who is uh, successful, but at the same time who's excellent as a leader, then I must look at the most impactful aspects of those goals that I have. Three, your goal must be measurable and it must be possible as well. So goals that are not measured can't get managed. So you want to manage your goals, you've got to have some measures and they have to be possible. So we don't need to have the most ridiculous goals, which is not possible for us to meet at all. So for example, we got one month and we have 10 million people to be vaccinated. I can't say I'm going to vaccinate all those 10 million in one month when I don't have supplies and I don't have any idea where they're going to be. So it's very important for us to make those goals possible as well. You can stretch yourself, which is important because usually we set our goals very low and we achieve those goals. And that's the problem of humanity. It seems. We don't set our goals high enough. Now there are two reasons because of why we don't set those goals high enough, challenging goals. Uh, there's a brilliant saying that goes, and it's in Napoleon Hill, anything that the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. Two things are required. You need to conceive that goal, conceive it in, the, you know, in your head, picture it. Picturing is very important because the brain, they say, does not understand the difference between imagination and reality. And they prove that a person who wants to be a great sports person, they've seen people who are basketball players, they never ask them to go and practice basketball. They're good players. They say, okay, now for one week, I don't want you to play basketball. All I want you to do is just in the mind, just repeat those steps of you playing amazing basketball. Brain is only visualizing that. And on the other hand, they have people who are good basketball players, but they make them busy doing other stuff, doing anything else, but not thinking basketball. Bring them back and they start playing in the brain. They see the people who are actually just imagining all those ways in which they were playing brilliant basketball, thrash the other guys. Otherwise, they were actually equal, all right? So visualize anything the mind can conceive is important. But what's also important is belief. You need to have belief. And a lot of what happens to us is we don't believe our own selves as much as we should. And that means we have a goal there, which is set. But it's just words on the wall, words on a piece of paper. In my heart, I have not yet etched it because I don't believe it. But the moment you're able to etch that in your heart, you've really bought into that particular goal of yours and you're able to see it. There's nothing that can stop you from it. Yeah, so that's an important aspect of planning in the space of leaders. Let's look at, when we look at planning, I want you to think about a goal that you like to achieve in the next three years. Simple goals for us, you know, as students, I'm sure if you're in your eighth standard, you want to probably do read something when you're in 11th or 12th standard. Okay. What would some of your goals be in the next three years? And if you think three years, I'm not going to see much of a change in terms of where I'm going to space. I'm going to still be a student. I want to be great at the studies. Three years to five years. Think about a goal that you want to set for yourself. 
And I'd like you to see how I'll support you with this simple tool I'm going to share with you that will get you to your goals in the most beautiful fashion. And this tool is being used by some of the best leaders of the world, right? Just think about a goal you like to achieve, and I will run you through a simple methodology right now, okay? So before I go there, I want you all to have some sort of a goal in your mind that you want to achieve in the next three years or five years. Okay, I'm sure you've got something there already. Now, would somebody want to just share one of your goals as an example? I just want to take one example as we move forward. Any one of you wants to share a goal? Okay, so you have an MIT, you have an IIT. Thank you. Okay, I got that. Beautiful. You want to get a PhD, qualified engineer. Brilliant. Okay. So these are career goals, educational goals that we have. Med school, fantastic. Okay, lovely. Okay, good stuff. So, so the first part we mentioned that you've got to conceive and believe. Very, very important. Those two aspects, uh, there's no substitute for these two because there's so many times that you would have obstacles in your way. Remember, whenever you have a goal set, there are going to be obstacles. It's not going to be so easy that I got that goal and I'm just going to walk in and I would have it. There will be obstacles. There will be alternatives. There will be different people telling different things. So a lot of things are going to happen on the way to that particular space. So that's okay. Don't worry about it. That's part of life. That's the journey of everybody in, in, in this world, right? Everybody wants to set out to doing something. There are going to be other aspects that come along the way. So get ready for that and accept them as they come. However, how do you deal with them? So Firstly, now, whilst we understand that you have that goal that you want to achieve in the next three years or five years, there would be certain immediate things you want to attend to. You want to attend to some things like currently, you might want to do a lot of these things and you want to go to the library of yours, but there's a pandemic. You've got to take care of these things. So you would like to have a group study with 15 people in your house. You cannot do that now. Why? Because of the pandemic. So what are the urgent matters? Urgent matter is I have to do this right now. I've got to do it here. I cannot postpone this. And what is that? There's a vaccination that's coming up. I've got to take that tomorrow. Can I delay the vaccination? No, I've got to do it. Hey, but my goal is to be so-and-so. What's the vaccination have to do anything with that goal? It doesn't. But if you don't do that, then it's, it's a matter of your safety, of your health. So... There are things that will come in your way whilst you're going ahead with this particular aspect of your goal, which is in this particular space, which is called urgent and important. Certain things cannot be postponed. They need to be done, all right? Because they could be for your safety. They could be for your security. They could be important for things that you're having to do. For example, it's your, um, it's, it's, it's supposing it's your, your mother's birthday, right? And that's today. So what's it's urgent is important. You gotta go get the cake, bake it, or get that gift for her, give it to her. All these things are important. You cannot ignore them and they have to be done now because they all come with a timeline. Everything that comes with a timeline is important and urgent. That's have, it has to be done. You cannot ignore these things. That we call the fire. Fire, you, it's like you're in this house, uh, in this, in this, you know, wherever you might be sitting right now. And we have this uh, seminar taking place. And next door, there's a fire that's caught, right? Uh, you have your curtains on fire. I'm sure none of you are going to sit down saying, hey, you know what? We have a very, very important session taking place. Let that fire continue. No, you'll drop everything. The first thing you're going to go is doze that fire off. All right. So that's urgent and important. In your life, there are certain things that are urgent and important. You can do nothing about it. You just have to attend them, attend them quickly. All right. That's what makes you sensible. The second aspect of what is in your life, and this is a very important part, we call that quadrant two, where things are not urgent but important. And these are all those things. So if I have to get into, uh, you know, an IIT or MIT, or I want to get become a med student, what is it that I need to do in order for me to get there? So you're completely focused in terms of what you've got to read what you've got to study, what you've got to be doing research on, who are the people you've got to be talking to and meeting with, and who are those like-minded people who are going to support you, who are going to give you those answers, those clarity, those suggestions, who are those mentors that you've got to be with. All of those things are 
not urgent. You don't have to do that immediately. Why? Because, hey, I want to achieve this after three years. So it's not like the fire that I have to go out and put doses off immediately, but it's extremely important for you to achieve your goal. That's why it's important. It's not urgent. All right. So we call this the diamond space. The space of the diamond is a place where it's invaluable. There's no value to this. The good news is if you start focusing over here, you are getting closer every step, every moment that you spend on quadrant two, Q2 is quadrant two. Every moment you spend on quadrant two, you are inching towards your goal. All right. But the problem is it's not urgent. So there is no timelines for it unless it reaches the last space. You know, then it probably becomes a Q1, urgent and important. You know that tomorrow on the exams, I've got to study. Hey, why? What were you doing all these years, all these days, all these months? You know, I was doing so many other things, a lot of things. I don't know, really, for stuff, you know, time just flew. Well, so if you have yourself sorted in this fashion, time won't fly. Even if time flies, you will be the pilot of that plane. All right. So that's quadrant two. Let's look at quadrant four once before I go to quadrant three. Quadrant four is about what is not urgent and not important. Hmm. It's this garbage. It's the waste of things. And I don't think any of you must be doing this like, you know, you know, you're just aimlessly doing something that has nothing to do with your goal. And it is not urgent, which means you don't have to do it now. It's not that fire that if you don't dose it off, people's lives are at risk. No. So, but still people do those things. So I'm just thinking about, uh, you know, my own life. What would I probably do sometimes? Uh, yes, I would watch maybe some, you know, a serial on television, uh, which to me is not important. It's just TP, right? Time pass. It's not important. It's not urgent. But I just watch it. It's gripping. It's, you know, I like the suspense. And I just keep going forward. Uh, does it help me in my health? Does it entertain me in the sense that, well, you see, there's a difference between entertainment and, uh, this is a very important distinction, entertainment and recreation. Recreation is important. All right. So I go cycling. I go in the morning cycling, go afternoon cycling. Even, and I find, I, I play tennis in the morning. I recreate, which means the whole energy in my body recreates. I feel so strong as my immune system goes up. You know, I can see uh, all these beautiful chemicals being pumped in my body, keeping me strong and healthy. That's recreation. And I feel very energized when I do that. I do that, come back and I can focus. But if I'm watching that, you know, television serial that is just entertainment pure, I don't see how I'm going to be more rejuvenated to come back and do something. So be a little careful about this distinction between recreation and pure entertainment. You could get entertained. We're not saying not to do that, but there's a time to do that as well. All right. So then last quadrant is the quadrant that we call urgent and not important, <laughs> which means it's urgent for other people but it's not important for me. And I call it the blah, blah, blah uh, quadrant. It's blah, 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 because you have people who come and speak to you, right? The phone rings and somebody wants to talk to you. You are doing something very important, focused towards your goal, but there's somebody else who wants to talk about something that has nothing to do with anything that is going to help you. But you have got to pick the phone up. It's a friend and you got to, you know, you feel bad and embarrassed to say no to them because, you know, they may think I'm arrogant. They may think that I am a heartless gutter snipe. And so let me speak to them. And so you speak to them. And then lo and behold, it's 20 minutes and you say, Phew, that's quite some time. Okay, so that's the blah, 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 quadrant. urgent. You know, like somebody wants to go and have tea. And I often see that in, in offices. They want to go and have tea. Please go and have your tea. But they will come and stand on my desk and say, hey, let's go and have a cup of tea. You know, I just had my tea 10 minutes ago, but just to give this person company, I just got to go with him. So lots of time goes off. Urgent for them. Sorry, it's important for them probably that tea break, but not for me. I just had mine and I'm focusing on my stuff and suddenly I get distracted. So all these distractions, which you need to do now, but it's not important for you. All right. So this is an important way in which we can see those four quadrants. So now I want to set up a poll to check whether you can look at the scheme of things in your life and see if you've understood urgent and important, not urgent, not important, and urgent, not important. Not urgent, not urgent. So these are four quadrants, all right? So there's a poll, eight simple questions. I want to just answer all these questions. And then let me just share the poll and see how well you guys have done. And if you got it right or wrong, all right? So let me just launch the poll for everybody.
Okay. You guys are now seeing this. I just want to, for example, the first one, reading lecture notes. Would that be the quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, or quadrant four? Select the quadrant and then go to the second question. And so answer all these questions, please. Uh, let's take about uh, a few moments. Don't have to rush it, but uh, think and do it well. Good, I'm getting some very interesting responses. Go on, go on. Everybody, you're doing well. You're doing well. Don't worry, there could be some which have a thin line between a few quarters. Go ahead with whatever is your gut feel. Trust your gut. Okay, good. Come on, come on. Be bold, brave, and resolute and just go and give your answer. Don't be those, you know, spectators of cricket, but become a participant. Be a cricketer yourself and participate. Go on. Participate. Participate. Give us your answers. It's anonymous. We don't know who's right, who's wrong. Don't worry. Just give us your answers. We can't see who's giving us what answers. So go ahead. I'll probably keep it open for another minute. So please. Do yourself a favor. How you behave in sessions like this determines a lot about your leadership competencies in organizations, in your universities, in your colleges. So the best leader are those who are disciplined, people who have discipline and are able to push themselves beyond their own obstacles that stop us, stop them from participating. So participation, taking initiative, very important. Go on. Okay. We got half of you who've participated. We're waiting for the other, other half. You've got to complete the entire survey, only then I get your responses. So don't leave out any question, please. And just submit the moment you've done all. Okay, let's go ahead now. Let me go in, in the poll. Um, let's do a countdown, right? And see how quickly guys, let me count from 10 down. So for those who have the last minute, go and do 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, and a half. And okay, we end the poll. Great, let me share results. And then let's go through this one at a time. Here we have the first one. Okay, guys, let's see how we did. Let's see how we did. Reading lecture notes. So huge amount of you felt it's quadrant two and well done. It is quadrant two lecture notes. Uh, usually if you're reading your lecture notes just before your exams, I'll put it in quadrant one. But if you're regularly reading your lecture notes, then it's quadrant two. So I will give you the quadrant one. Whoever felt it's quadrant one would be right if it was something that you're doing the last minute. But if you're reading your lecture notes, you know, because you've learned something, you want to get more, uh, you know, clarity, you want to really uh, keep that in your mind, that's quadrant two. It's the diamond. It's not urgent, but it's important. 
Second part, helping a friend overcome boredom. Quadrant one is it's urgent. They are having a boredom, it's urgent for them, but it's not important for you. They're just overcoming boredom. So uh, if you become the person who wants to overcome boredom of people, uh, that would usually come in quadrant three because it's urgent, not important for you. Unless it's you're in that space where you're trying to support people, you're a counselor and all that stuff, and that's your scheme of things, then okay, you can do that. Uh, but if it's usually normal boredom stuff, hey, I'm feeling bored, yeah, come on, let's do this. Hey, I'm feeling bored, man, let's just go and do that. That's something that you would usually put in quadrant three. Quadrant two, as I said, if it was something that was important for you, you put it in quadrant two, but I don't see it being important. If it's just a small, if there's somebody who's there, uh, who's just feeling bored and he just wants to, you know, while time away, that's when it goes into quadrant three. Let's go around to, okay, someone felt it's quadrant four as well. Okay, that's interesting. Loading assignment deadlines. Uh, so, yes. So what would you do with assignment deadlines? Uh, some of you felt it was quadrant one, very important. It has to be done immediately. You have no choice. So you got to do it immediately. So that's important and urgent. Surfing the web, multiple choice. You said, four, wow, quadrant four. All of you agree with them. So I'm sure none of you must be doing this too much of your time. Then we say cramming for exams, quadrant one. Yes, because you didn't do those revisions on time, you got to cram for exams and you feel so burnt out. That's why it's a fire there. You burn yourself out. Mindlessly browsing through social media, quadrant four. Well done. Helping a friend, of course, this is mindlessly browsing, right? Uh, okay, Help, helping a friend complete an assignment. Okay, quadrant two and quadrant three. So there's a good match between quadrant two. So I want to help and support a colleague because the support, that colleague is going to support me tomorrow. It's a relationship I want to develop quadrant two. And so that would be perfectly fine. When you look at quadrant three, if it's, it is certainly not important for you unless you believe and you understand that it's something that's going to support me it's going to help me it's a sincere and a genuine need that's required by my friend then you definitely will want to do that remember it's important for you to to to, to the way you can quantify according to two to quarter three is that i already have so many things incomplete i've not done so many of my own assignments and i'm going to help somebody else say no listen First, let me do those stuff that I feel is important and urgent for me. And it's not urgent, but it's important for me. So let me complete my assignments and then support somebody else. So you've got to be very careful how you choose between these two. Planned studies. Planned studies is quadrant one. Not really. Planned studies will be quadrant two. Because you're planning for it. You're looking at something that is you know, a week ahead, 10 days ahead, a year ahead, and you're planning your studies and you're going about doing it, which means that's important for you, certainly. It's not urgent. You don't have to necessarily plan. You can just cram it all up and do it on one final day before the exams or before that particular lecture. But when you're planning it, remember all ways of planning, always whatever you're planning and you're planning well ahead in time, you are work creating from quadrant two. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for your beautiful answers. Uh, and as you saw, there could be sometimes a thin line dividing two places. And so don't worry so much about it. As long as you understand, where do you think a leader would normally focus most of their time? Now that's a rhetorical question. It is quadrant two. Quadrant two is a space of diamond. That's the invaluable space. And we've got to see how I can spend more time there. So your relationships, your health, your hygiene, your education, your, your everything that is connected to your long-term goals is in your diamond. And so when you're spending time in all those aspects, well done, you're doing a good job for yourself. Urgent and important, you have no choice, you've got to do them. But remember, if you don't work on quadrant two and you don't have planned stuff, it becomes quadrant one. Quadrant one is the, the quadrant of fatigue and of burnout. And the more number of things on quadrant one, the more you feel burnt out. Because you got, I mean, it's a, it's a quadrant of stress. And so you've got all these things to complete before the end of the day. Gosh, I've got only 24 hours. How can I do all these things? My dear boy, what were you doing when you actually had all the time? So that's when you do not focus on Q2. How do you get time for Q2? By looking at what are the things I'm doing on Q4 and Q3? How can I avoid these two quadrants, Q3 and Q4? So I have a beautiful triple D, uh, let's say tool that will support you going through your time. Do, delegate, delay, and delete. Whatever is on quadrant one, you got to do it. 
you have a choice. Sometimes you might delegate it. So, uh, you know, there is a ticket that has to be purchased uh, for a family outing. Outing is tomorrow. We've got to buy those tickets. I got to do it. Okay, you can't postpone it. But hey, can my brother, sister, sibling, somebody else, my mom, dad, somebody else do it? Possible? If they have the time, can they take that from me? Yes, fantastic. Unless it's a certain thing that I've really taken up and I've committed to, let me do it. Otherwise, can I delegate that? Otherwise, do it. But the idea is don't delay this part. If you delay the things on the file, it's going to then the next day you'll have 20, the next day you'll have 30, and then you'll be really burnt out. Yeah. Because sometimes, even though we have deadlines, have you had people saying, I'm supposed to submit tomorrow? I'm sorry, I could not submit it tomorrow. Give me another day. Give me another day. Give me another day. Why? Because you're not even doing those which are important and urgent for you. They're also be delayed. So be careful. When there's something on the fire point, get it done immediately. Get somebody else to do it, but finish that off. Get it off and strike it off the list. Two, you what is the diamond all about? The diamond also is about doing. Diamond, you have it. You have all these things which are, you know, the plans that you want to keep yourself forward to. You want to develop relations, to take care of your health. You want to ensure that I've got to start researching for this particular thing. I've got to make those applications ready right now. I've got to make those writings. I've got to have these things. All that stuff you start doing right now. Start working on that. What about the other two quadrants? Then you delay or delete the last two. It's urgent, not important, delay it. So your friend comes and says, I want you to get this thing done for me. I'm feeling bored here. Listen, you know what? I have these three things to complete. Can we actually connect after that? So what do you delay a bit? Some things you can delete completely, right? Delete is quadrant four. I'm doing things in my day that take up over two hours, three hours. And if you take two hours every single day that you're actually putting in the fourth quadrant, how much does that actually accumulate to in a year's time? You have a year, you know, a three-year plan, and you take those two hours every single day over three full years. I mean, it can transform your entire life, just those two hours of focused work. So imagine if you think you're spending time in quadrant three and quadrant four, and there's a lot of stuff that's there which is not important for you. How can you delay and delegate it? You delay, sorry, you delay and you can also delegate. Yeah, so for example, quadrant three, somebody's feeling bored. Is there somebody else who has nothing to do? Who can actually help this person out? So finally, you can find that out. Sometimes they say your network is your net worth. So you need to have a good network as well, right? So that's quadrant two. Building a network is quadrant two. Utilizing it will help you in delegating uh, those stuff to people. So you delay and you de delete, completely wipe it off. And so then you're doing pretty well with these four things. Okay, so if you got this well, and before we take on the next subject, I want you to just think for a moment, make this very practical for you. You spent time with us. Thank you so much for that invaluable time. Are there things in your life that is in quadrant three and quadrant four that you can see right now? Okay. Can we delete those things? First thing. Can we delay those things after I've done my Q2? If I finish my Q2 stuff, I can then do those things. Delay them. Or can I delegate it to somebody else? And now look at the Q2. What is that one thing that you need to start focusing on from today onwards that's going to really help you achieve your goal? What is that one thing you need to do? Think about that one thing that you need to focus more on that's supporting you in reaching the Q2 that you have not yet started doing, but you know that that's going to be the game changer for you. And so you're going to stop this Q3, Q4, and you're going to focus on the Q2. Yeah, so take a moment and think of that Q2. What is that one thing? Okay, beautiful. Let's do a small game now, a small interesting game for all of you. I like you to, for this game, I want you all to have a pen or a writing instrument. It could be a pencil as well and a piece of paper. Can you please quickly get one for yourself if you don't have it? It's a small, interesting game, a very interesting game that we're going to play. All right, pick it up and come quickly. Okay, so let's start the game. Let's start the game. What I want you to do is simultaneously, I want you to just first listen to me before you start. All right. 
I want you to write alphabets from A to J. Simultaneously, as you put them, A, I want you to also then put the number one. And below that, I want you to write the Roman numeral one. All right. So you start with A, number one, Roman numeral one. Then B, the number two, and the Roman numeral three, uh, sorry, two. Then C, number three, Roman numeral three. Go on up to J, all right? I just want you to do that simple exercise. Go ahead and do that. And see how long you take to getting that done properly. I want you to write them simultaneously at the same time. So you have to write the alphabet first, the number below that, and up below that, I want you to write the Roman number. So they finished. Well done. Well done. Okay, I guess most of you must have done by now, right? Okay, so now I want you to do it in a different way. Just change the style. I want you to just do the alphabets first from A to J. Below that, you write 1 to 10, and then you move as 1 to 10. Do it that way. Come on. And time yourself. So You're not doing them simultaneously. You only write now the second time. I wanted you only write the alphabets first, A to J alphabets. Below that, write the numbers from 1 to 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way. And below that, I want you to write the Roman numerals, 1 to 10. Okay, sir. Done. Done, so. Done. Okay, beautiful. Which was faster, the first one or second one? Second one. Second one. Oh. Second one. Okay, second one was definitely faster. Any idea why? Because uh, we don't in columns. Directly, you could write all the alphabets first. We are so writing on one, way, one, one, one way. Yeah, it's so writing about, the one each way. More about it's about the focus. And I heard somebody say that. Well, well said. It's about you're focusing on one thing at one time. One, I'm only focusing on numbers. Before that, I'm only focusing on alphabets. I'm only focusing on numerators. You see, there's a lot of energy that you waste otherwise in terms of you're trying to think about this and then you're trying to think of something else and then you're trying to think of something. And then second time again, you're doing the same thing. So what happens is that's a lot of dissipation of energy. And so you're not able to get it quickly. So if you see the reason for that is, and, and this is something that you're really going to be, uh, you know, maybe holding me for, but multitasking, they say, is a thief. Whilst we have heard so many people say you should be a good multitasker, and I know many people, I, I've interviewed so many people who wanted to come and join my organization. One of the things on the CV is I'm a great multitasker. So for those you might think, hey, come on, I thought multitasking was good. Now, multitasking in this sense where you need to think about that one thing that you're doing that just focus there. And if you can do that, finish off one aspect, go back to the, go into the next one. Finish that, go into the next one. Now, imagine I'm talking to you, I'm trying to focus on you, and I suddenly see my phone, and I'm trying to see my, uh, you know, the messages are coming on my, uh, on my, on my WhatsApp. Imagine I'm trying to do the seven, uh, let's say today, a live example, I'm doing this webinar, and I'm trying to see what message I'm getting. A, it's a disrespect to you. B, I'm not going to be doing anything close to what's justified as a good facilitator because I cannot concentrate. And so my ideas are going to be all different ways. And especially if I have a message which can be a little bit you know, shocking or shaking, then I'm not going to be here at all. So what happens is, and remember, this is not just about tasks. When you do one task, finish the task, then go to the next task, finish that, go to the next task. But it's also about how we actually have lost that discipline of focus, unfortunately, today with the amount of stuff around us that's constantly throwing information. You have on one side, the television's on, you have audio, you have some music, you have music display, you have people talking, chatting, you have your phones, you've got probably triple phones, double phones. And in those phones, you've got 50 applications and each application is trying to communicate something to you. Imagine what is happening inside over here. You know, just before I understand, remember, understand what I want to do, payment is gone. So it's very important for you to stay focused. And then focus is about the mind. It's about the mind. It's a mind game. Focus is a mind game. When I'm studying, and if my mind is going to think about 
you know, the food I'm going to have after this. <laughs> or the mind is thinking about something that you're going to have to do with your friends later on. You've lost that particular space. And it takes you quite some time to come back to that state of focus. So when you talk about managing time, remember you have to manage your mind to start with. If you cannot take care of your mind, you might have all the best books. You may be in the most brilliant library in the world. You cannot do what you want to do because your mind is not at ease. So you learn to keep the mind at ease. Learn to let it know that, listen, present is important. Okay. Yeah, because sometimes what even in fears is, hey, what happens if... And then sometimes stress comes in as well. I'm studying for my exams and some judgment, you know, hey, I don't think I'm so good at this. I can think of this person doing so well. Oh, that person, oh, there's so much pressure. So immediately you get... So as youth, you're not strong physically. But remember, you've got to become very strong at a mental space. And so when you are doing something, you must have the strength enough. What does it mean your mental strength? You have the strength enough to say no to a thought that comes which is not required at that point in time. So you know that this is an important thought for me. This is a useless thought for me. This is a negative thought. And this is a thought that is to do with the future, which is not, I mean, whether I, whether I crack it or not is secondary, I've got to study. And so can I focus in that particular space? And that's why multitasking is a thief. Okay, so we have some Q and A's. We've got a little time. Yes, we've got some time. So if you can put some questions on the chat box, we'd love to take those answers for you. Any questions relevant to leadership, to planning, to managing your time? How to focus? Thank you. Sorry, I'll let Ruchi read those questions and then she can give me whatever she likes. Okay, but since I read that first, let me go ahead and Ruchi, please, if you don't mind seeing all the other questions, but I'll take the first question and answer that. How to focus? I said, see, what happens is the mind is your best friend and your mind can be your worst enemy. If you can focus, your mind is your best friend. If you're not able to focus, then your mind is working against you. So that's a practice that you have to do. So for example, I meditate. That helps me a huge amount for me to focus. What am I doing in meditation? I'm just trying to see what thought is coming, catching it and changing it. So I do something called SOS and some things that you can do yourself. Watch your thoughts, observe your thoughts and see, you know, be more aware of what's happening inside. You know, like a person who's standing on a station, he's looking at trains coming left and right. He's just watching the sta those trains. He's not doing anything to them. Similarly, you watch your thoughts, just watch those thoughts coming and going. Don't do anything to them. Just understand that this is happening here and then say, okay, what do I have to do? Sometimes we do something which is just becoming more physically present. So people just do take some deep breaths, right? Three deep breathing. And focus on your breathing. Just focus on breathing because you can do, see your mind is actually focusing on one thing and that's what it's doing at that point in time. So you focus on something at a physical level at your senses. What am I feeling? Sometimes we just rub the tips and they say, try and feel the ridges of your fingertips. You're just doing that and Feeling the senses over here helps you to stop everything else that's going on in the head and come here. So focus is all about not letting your mind, you know, go into a different space when you want it to be in this space. But be kind to yourself. Don't beat yourself just because your mind goes to some other direction. It's normal. Okay? Mine goes, yours goes, everybody else's goes. Your mind can go up. Be gentle with your mind. Like you take care of a baby, be gentle with the mind and say, okay, listen, this is what's important for me right now. So can I just come into the present because this is where I can do and make a difference. So explain this to yourself like you'd explain a small child, your little brother or sister, and then come back to the present. So if you do that and do that practice regularly, you become good at it. But don't just let your thoughts drive you wherever you want and then jump towards what your thoughts are saying. Learn to discipline your thoughts. Just as you go to the gym for a physical or body gym, this is the mind gym. You strengthen the mind, you can focus. All right, next question, please. Ruchi, if you can read it out. Yes, uh, it's how to divide quadrant two and quadrant one into which is primary and secondary. Quadrant one is simple. It has a timeline. You've got to do it right now. It's immediacy. But quadrant two is not immediacy. If you don't do it, nothing happens for you for the next one, two, 15 days. So if you can understand that it's to do with the timelines, it's like you have this gun on your head. That's quadrant one. You know, quadrant two, you don't do it. No problem. 
you will suffer, but later on, and you will not even know it for a long time. So quadrant two is important for you. It's aligned to your goals. It's aligned to a higher purpose in life. It's aligned to your happiness. It's aligned to your peace of mind. It's aligned to your contentment. And that's very important for you. But you don't have to do that now. And so that's why we ignore all these beautiful things. And we only do those things which are urgent. All right. So that's how we actually distinguish. Next one, please. Uh, how do we... Sorry, don't worry. Ruchi, read the questions for us. Ruchi, go ahead. Uh, sir, when we try to adopt a new technique, we tend to go back to our original habits. So, sir, yeah. how do we create a habit and stick with it? It's a beautiful one. We have so many resolutions in New Year's that never sticks, you know, just continues to change. And the idea here is discipline and accountability. You must hold yourself accountable. You must have a certain discipline. There must be a regime. Have some support systems. Think about some beautiful ways. For example, there was a time I wanted to wake up in the morning at four o'clock every day. I made sure that I obviously have an alarm clock, which is far away, and I don't let it snooze, okay? Far away from my bed. So I have a technique. Every day I must do it. But what am I going to do it? I need to do something fantastic for it. Why? So remember, a why is very important. When your why is strong, you can get to that space easily. So why do I want to wake up at four o'clock? And when I see the benefits of all those things, and I had 50 benefits, why do I want to wake up there? And then I also had somebody else as a friend. I said, listen, I'm waking up at four o'clock. I want you to also wake up at four o'clock. This is what we're going to do together. So there's another commitment there. Sometimes we don't hold on to our own commitments to make for ourselves. So have somebody else also who's with you as an accountability partner. Next one, please. So can I see? Uh, how do we uh, grab great opportunities with the skills of leadership? Well, I think being available, being in the present, keeping your ears open, eyes also watching. Uh, ensuring that you're not too engrossed in one thing that you miss out on opportunities. And I think more than anything else, don't get stuck in negative thoughts and feelings. Lots of times you're looking at one door, which is closed and you get so caught up. Like for example, I was terrible at sports, but then I did not even realize that my dad said, Hey, focus on roller skates. So there's an opportunity there. So there's always opportunity available, but we are so focused on the one door that closes, and there's so much of crying and cribbing and stress that we don't even look at all the other things that are available. We always have opportunities. Don't worry. One door closes. Don't get too frustrated. Next one. Please. How to increase your brain power to do tasks more efficiently or how do we motivate ourselves to follow our plans? One good thing is visualization. Please just go by and look at visualization. The best of gymnasts in the world, the greatest sports person do a lot of visualization because they try to strengthen the, you know, you have in the brains, you've got these, uh, you know, these, the synapses that you connect all these, uh, I'm not getting the right term, but your, your neural pathways, right? So you can create a lot of these neural pathways through repetition. Repetition does not necessarily mean only doing it physically, but even if you visualize things and repeat it, you were creating those same neural pathways, just as you are actually doing that in reality. Another uh, one, please. Sir, can sir, how do we get to focus on our mind if we don't have any interest? How do we get to focus on one thing? Okay, remember, there is always an interest in something or the other. You know, there's something or the other that's, that's interesting. So there is nothing that nobody can say I'm not interested. So some people could be just interested in food, you know. So you, there is an interest. So try and see what those interests are and see if you can do something valuable and worthwhile in that space or whichever interest you might have. But we all have interests. We all have specialities. Just do some soul searching. We all are unique, believe me. Each and every one of us, absolutely unique. How do we personalize, uh, sorry, how do we prioritize personal responsibilities and leadership responsibilities? No, don't, don't, don't prioritize, please integrate. I prefer the word integration. You always must integrate personal with professional. Don't try to make them different. The more different you have, you're having, you're living different lives, you're having a facade, you're having masks. Take them all off. Okay, good, we'll take one last question. How much is planning and how much is over planning? <laughs> yes, very nicely said. So if I ask you this question, there are five birds sitting on a fence, three decide to fly, how many are left? Well, three decided to fly, but they did not fly yet. So five birds are still on that fence. So if you're not acting on your plans, then you're over planning. Please, you've got to plan, but you've got to come back to the present quickly and start doing things. So don't just go on planning, 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 but not acting on it. So if you see that I have plans, but I'm not taking those plans off, then you're over planning. So then see that you plan just enough for yourself. Right, with that, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed today's session. And now we're going to come back to the next session, which is on Wednesday. Before that, a small assignment for all of you. 
we want you to summarize what you have learned from today's session in a very creative way. Communicate it to us in a creative fashion. So in a form of a drawing, a poetry, a mind map, anything that you feel creative enough. And I, I wanted to push yourself into doing something creative. Let me tell you, friends, please do this. Many of you might be sitting there on the fence saying, should I or should I not? I might not have, I'm not a very creative person, but no, you are creative. And believe me, when you do this exercise, you'll realize that next session, we're coming back and we're going to talk to you about a very important aspect, which is communication and creativity. This is why we want you to do this exercise. Simple. In the next day, by tomorrow, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, please send this to us. These are the numbers of Ruchi and Prakash. To any one of us, please send us to us. It could be a drawing, a poetry, a mind map. This exercise will help you really take out the juice and the value and the diamond from today's session. It's a very important exercise. Don't miss this. Share this creative work with us and we'll write to name a few of those good work that we have got. So please, you're going to get some good uh, appreciation when you come back next time. What have you learned from today's session? Express it to us creatively in any way you would like, but just be creative and express it to us. All right. So till we meet again, Shukran, Shukran Jazeelan and Ma Salam. Thank you, Mr. Chakani. Mm, bye. Uh, bye, sir. Uh, boy, students, uh, students, please wait for a minute uh, before you, uh, you know, start wondering who is Mr. Chukani. He very humbly started the, the session without introducing himself, though I requested. Mr. Chugani is a director of EQ training and consultancy. He's a professor of negotiation and leadership at SPGEN of Global Management. He's a corporate trainer and he's an ICF certified uh, leadership coach. So I, I found this session very, very fruitful and I'm sure uh, all the students must have enjoyed this session and will be looking forward to the next one. Thank you once again, Mrs. Rastogi and Mr. Chugani. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Bye, sir. Bye, bye. All the best. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Thank, Thank you. And see you guys soon. Thank see you next Thank you. session. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day. Have a nice day, guys. Thank you, sir. I think uh, Mr. Chugani and Mrs. Rastogi, you can end the session because